am, bro. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. I'm Mac Chista, host of the Jetavision, and today we're reviewing Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine, a game that, even 13 years after its release, remains one of the more influential video games to use the Warhammer 40,000 IP. In Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine, Forge World Gryo, a planet that produces weapons for the Imperium of Man's War Machine and plays host to a Warlord class battle titan, sees itself under attack by an orc wog, led by war boss Grimskull. Get off my ship, Spice Marine! With the planet's Imperial Guard unable to receive reinforcements to secure the planet, a trio of Space Marines are sent to turn the tide. You play as Captain Titus, a more level-headed Marine who is well-respected despite his relative youngness. He's accompanied by grizzled veteran Sidonius and by the books and somewhat green as grass Leandros. Along their way to secure the planet, they meet Lieutenant Mira, who leads the desperate defense against the orcs, and they ship the Inquisitor Drogon, who may or may not open the planet up to getting invaded by demons in the not-so-distant future. The story works. We wouldn't say it's a masterclass of writing, but it does what it needs to to justify the gameplay. And that's good enough for me. Although that being said, on first glance, it's pretty easy to dehumanize space marines. I mean, they're generic, fanatical, super space soldiers, right? But to this game's credit, the characters aren't really like that. They have toned-down personalities that vary from one another, which makes it easier to get into them. At the end of the day, you can follow along pretty well whether you're into Warhammer 40,000 or not. Though if you are, you can appreciate the pretty neat references the game makes to the universe. Moving on to gameplay, Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine is a third-person shooter and hack and slash. Enemies come at you in large waves, and you gotta annihilate them in gory, bloody splendor. The variety of enemy types also means that shooting in melee is well-balanced. Anyone armed with guns are best taken out at range, while anyone with heavy armor are best engaged with in melee. Larger swaths of weaker enemies can be whittled down at range before you close in to finish the rest. The hack and slash combat is not just mindless melee either. You might be a super soldier, but you're not indestructible. You'll need to weave and dodge enemy attacks where possible and make use of combos to take out and stun large groups of enemies. Stunned enemies can be killed with a brutal takedown animation, which recovers health, but since you're vulnerable as it plays out, you'll have to be careful with where and when you do this. Your standard pistol and bolt or can get most jobs done, but you also get access to some other toys, including but not limited to the powerful deadly accurate LAS cannon a storm bolter which absolutely shreds everything with its high fire rate, and this vengeance launcher, which shoots explosives that stick to enemies and explode with a press of a button. You can also get jump packs every now and then, which let you smash into the ground, obliterating the enemy. Now these things were just so much fun. Everything controls very well. We especially like the added touch of how the game portrays the weight of space marines. You can really feel the heft and clunkiness as they run around, which is pretty neat. Levels are very linear, which makes them a little less interesting, but you also never find yourself at a loss as to where to go. <coughs> <coughs> Although you can find hidden nooks and crannies that have servo skulls, providing audio logs that open up the world a little more. You get perspectives from desperate citizens, overcrowded hospitals, deflated soldiers, and some more light is shed on Inquisitor Drogon's experiments. The levels, honestly, are quite forgettable. While the bridge battle and trench levels were pretty dope, the environments just don't really cling. Spoilers, I guess, but the final boss was... It's kind of lame. Oh, it's, it's just a bunch of quick time events. Truly an epic showdown for the ages. The campaign was overall a pleasant experience. Sure, the story is really only good enough to support gameplay, and the levels aren't all that special, but the satisfying combat really makes up for it. As a game journalist would put it, it really makes you feel like a space marine. It provides that sort of power fantasy, but also gives you a challenge as you fight through the swaths of enemies. Regarding the game's online mode, we weren't really able to get into it, because it's kind of totally dead. We did get to play the Exterminatus mode for a bit. It's basically the game's co-op player versus environment mode. You take on waves of enemies, racking up points as you do so. Special challenges can be completed to get even more points, like killing a number of enemies in a certain time span or capturing control points. There's not much to say about it, but it is fun. It's basically just the combat of the campaign condensed to an arena. And since the combat in this game is really good, it's a nice mode. Unfortunately, we can't say a lot about the online mode because, again, it is quite dead. But I feel like it's worth mentioning how detailed the customization is. You can choose different perks and weapons, but what stands out to me is the armor. Not only can you choose your Space Marines chapter, but you can pretty much customize every inch of their armor as well, which is pretty crazy. So that's pretty much all we could cover regarding Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine. Jetavision's score for this game is a 7.5 out of 10. While the story isn't much to write home about, while the levels aren't exactly spectacles, the gameplay alone makes up for it. It's simple, but it's fun, and that's why it kicks ass. 
pass. As far as recommendations go, I, I guess it's a little tricky. If we were reviewing this maybe two or three years ago, we'd probably say yes. Whether you're obsessed with 40k or just a dude bro wanting something to cater to your taste, everyone could get behind a super soldier going ham on everything. But with its sequel literally just around the corner, I mean, you may as well get that, right? I mean, it's, it's the most modern version. Not to mention that this game is $60. This game is 13 years old and they are charging full price for it. Heresy, man. What you gonna do? We'd recommend it on sale. Even if it's rendered completely obsolete by its successor, the game is, if nothing else, a pretty neat window into the past. I mean, it was a mainstay of the franchise for a very long time. And again, it's a really fun and solid game. Just, uh, be sure to get it on sale. That's gonna do it. If you like this review, leave a like and comment, maybe subscribe to the channel, keep up to date with our newest releases, and maybe check out our other reviews as well. We also have a Twitter and Discord if you're interested in that as well. Mac Chista, Jetavision, and I'm out of here. We will